Good morning, and welcome to this hearing of the Committee on Governmental Operations. I am the chair of the committee, Council Member Fernando Cabrera. Today we'll be holding a second hearing and a vote on two bills. The first proposed introduction, 748A, uh, sponsored by myself in relation to taxi and limousine commission related hearing procedures of the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings. The second is proposed introduction number 1288A, a, sponsored by Council Member Ben Kalos in relation to the campaign finance laws to be in effect for cover elections held prior to 2021 primary. Council Member Kalos will say a few words on his bill, proposed introduction 1288A, in a moment, but in brief, it will apply some of the changes for the campaign finance law instituted under ballot question number one, which voters approved in our most recent election. To all special and primary and general and runoff elections for city office between now and the 2021 primary. Just as with that primary, participating candidates will have an option of which system to follow while non-participating candidates will follow the existing system. Additionally, because of the compressed time frames of special elections, the bill will have, have the threshold to qualify for matching funds in a special election and lower the threshold to qualify to part participate in debates for citywide special election. Proposed introduction 748A addresses the hearing process used by oath when hearing tax-related violation. The nature of taxing and taxi, the taxi business is such that responding to a TLC summon is a serious matter. Respondents have to appear at oath in person if a driver wants to contest the summons. It may mean hours or even entire days spent away from earning a living. Therefore, it's an incredibly important, it is incredibly important that we ensure that these hearing procedures are as fair as possible. We want the TLC to be able to enforce its laws and regulations without drivers losing a day of income just to respond to a, a summons, and we want the outcomes to be as fair as possible as well. With that in mind, this bill sets forth a number of requirements for hearings on possible violation of TLC laws or regulation. First, it will require that a TLC representative be present at hearings, either in person or remotely. Second, it will permit a respondent to appear remotely through internet video. We heard at our last hearing about the need for drivers to appear remotely, and I'm happy to report that we have added that into the amended version of the bill being voted on today. Third, it will permit oath to reduce a violation if it finds that doing so may be in the interest of justice, provided that TLC will have 20 days to review the decision. Fourth, it will require automatic dismissal of any duplicate notice of violation. And finally, it will require hearings to be held in a timely manner so drivers don't waste precious time and money waiting for the hearings to start. I would like to thank the members of the committee for the vigorous discussion we have recently had on our campaign finance laws as well as for their commitment to making of hearing fairer for our hardworking taxi and limousine drivers. I also want to thank our committee staff, Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cron, Emily Vergon, Zach Harris, as well as Rob Newman, counsel to the speaker, as my own legislative director, Claire McLevain, for all their hard work. I will now turn it over to Council Member Kalo to speak on his bill. Good morning, I'm Council Member Ben Kalos. For those of you watching at home, that's at Ben Kalos. I wanna thank our chair, Fernando Cabrera, for his longstanding support for campaign finance reform and for hearing introduction 1288. Uh, it is co-sponsored by Council Members Keith Powers and Costa Constantinides, who signed on before introduction. Following our hearing last week, 
Uh, we also have the support uh, of members who have signed on, including Justin Brannon, Brad Lander, Steve Levin, Raphael Espinal, Robert Holden, Fernando Cabrera, Rory Lantzman, Donovan Richards, Chaim Deutsch, Antonio Reynoso, Robert Cornegy, Alika Amprey Samuel, and Raphael Salamanca, to name a few, and really appreciate all the support we've received from our colleagues. On November 6th, New York voted to get big money out of politics. After a decade-long fight for campaign finance reform, voters took matters into their own hands, and they overwhelmingly voted yes on ballot question one. Over 1.4 million voters flipped their ballots onto page four to vote on one ballot question, and of those, 1. 1.1 million of those voters chose yes. To put it in perspective, more people voted in favor of this measure than voted for all candidates for mayor in 2017. New Yorkers could not have been more clear in their mandate. Now, by way of background, in 2016, I had authored Introduction 1130, which was co-prime sponsored by Councilmember Fernando Cabrera, which had 31 total sponsors in the council. It received a hearing. I, as the chair, supported it. I was interested in voting it out. However, I was not able to get it done. Uh, I reintroduced that legislation in late March of this year and as introduction 732 of 2018, and it's already received 21 sponsors. When the mayor formed the Charter Revision Commission, I testified in favor of campaign finance reform on May 9th, June 19th, July 23rd, and August 9th, calling for reduction on contribution limits, increasing match ratios, and increasing public funds payments, all of which were in part or in whole adopted for the vote on November 6th. However, despite New Yorkers making it clearly known that this reform is what they wanted, the changes will not be in effect until the 2021 election cycle. Introduction 1288 extends the newly adopted campaign finance reform rules to special elections and the elections that will follow in the interim until 2021. It lowers contribution limits for citywides from 2,550 in a special to 1,000. It increases public matching for every small dollar contribution under 175 with six packs public tax dollars to matching up to 250 for citywide and continuing to match 175 at eight public tax dollars. It increases the public grant for those who opt in from 55% to 75% of the spending limit. For candidates participating in the soon to be called public advocates race, it will lower the, con the lowered contribution limits and increased matching would be retroactively applied to campaigns that select this option. In addition to applying ballot question one to the special election, the legislation goes further by lowering the minimum thresholds raised to qualify for a public grant by half for both options, just as the other limits have been halved. The thresholds for public advocate controller will be go from 125,000 to 62,500. Now, under, option, under the new option, only the first $250 of an individual New York City resident's contribution is applied towards meeting the dollar amount threshold. Participating candidates would still need to collect the same number of contributions, 1,000 for mayor, 500 for public advocate controller. Now, to be very clear, introduction 1288, as applied in 2019 to the February special election, September primary election, and November general election for public advocate provides a new option, but not a mandate. Just as with question one on the ballot, candidates may choose not to participate in this option, but participate under the current system of $175 matched six to one, up to 55% of the spending limit, or they can use the new system. Under the new system, a candidate for public advocate who opts into the new system would only need to raise $250 from 854 donors to see $213,516 matched eight to one for a full $1.7 million public grant which is 75% of the spending limit, leaving only 15% remaining to be raised. With these reforms, candidates for city office can finally run for office without big money, instead relying solely on small dollars and public dollars to win. I wanna thank Rob Newman, Brad Reed, Elizabeth Kronk, Central Staff for their work on this bill, and uh, thank you for a longer than normal opening statement, but we've been working on it for quite a while, and. Uh, Chair Cabrera has been there for a lot of this fight, so thank you. I urge my colleagues to vote yes. And I'll be voting yes in a little while. We're gonna hear from Council Member Yeager, but I wanna commend you uh, for this bill that uh, is truly, truly uh, is going to uh, 
have a fairer uh, system uh, to help those who want to run, not only for a public advocate, we're going to have this race coming up, but the upcoming races all the way to 2021. And with that, let me turn it over uh, to my esteemed colleague, uh, Council Member Yeager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Uh, sometimes, in my view, the process by which we do legislation is as important as the intended result. And as an example, look at Amazon. It's about the process. That's what we're talking about here in the Council now. Um, the result is important as well, but the process, the process by which we get to this place is just as important. This bill, uh, Introduction 1288, was introduced last Tuesday, it was a hearing on Wednesday, and today, 10 days after introduction, we're voting on it, in 10 days from introduction to passage. Under the charter, the bill would have had to have been laid on the desk of the members of this body the day after it was introduced, 10 days from start to finish. In no estimation, I don't think anybody can make the argument that that's good government. It's not. And I don't see how we can make the argument, no matter what the result is, that good government has a bill start, from start to finish in 10 days. Now, with respect to my friend, Councilman Kalos, um, he's a longtime champion of increasing public financing for elections. Uh, he's true to his word. He's held this opinion and these beliefs for longer than he's been in this body. And I know that the bill the idea, the concept, and the intended result comes from a good place, comes from good intentions. I will also say that in my district, all three questions lost. We are the only district in the city that had that result. But even citywide, where it did win, we're substituting our judgment today for the judgment of voters just a month ago. They voted for a bill. They voted to change the law. They were told that the law would be effective in 2021. Here come along us. And we say, no, voters, you were wrong. The question presented to you was 2021, but we're smarter than that. We're going to make it effective immediately. Not just effective immediately, effective 60, 70 days from now. Change the rules in the middle of the game and create a two-tiered process by which some candidates will raise $2,550 per person, and they will get a six-to-one match. And those candidates who for whatever reason, decide that they're going to raise only $1,000 per person, we'll get the eight to one match. It's $911,000 additional per, up to, per uh, candidate. And the fiscal impact statement, which we did not have available at the hearing on this bill last week, I presume that the speed by which it was heard following introduction is somewhat responsible for that, shows that in this fiscal year, $1.78 million is anticipated to be spent on this bill. Now, we've talked a lot in this council about NYCHA, the decrepit conditions of the homes that we as a government provide as affordable housing, decrepit. We talk about school teachers that we need more. Classroom sizes are too big. Maybe more cops, maybe more firefighters. Our libraries could use some help. Road repairs, certainly we have a homeless problem in this city. Health care, just a couple, because I only have a couple of seconds. I can't imagine a place where we have come to that it makes sense to take nearly $2 million this year alone and say, here, politicians, in a race that's in 70 days, here's some money to send out some more glossy flyers into the mailboxes of New Yorkers. Here's some more money for some consultants. NYCHA, going to stay the way it is. We talk a lot here in this council about the needs of our constituents. We're a $90 billion organization, the city of New York. But we have $2 million to blow this way. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's smart. I don't think it's good government. There's a fine line between responsible, good government public financing program, of which, in which I participated, in which so many of my colleagues participated. It enabled us to raise enough funds to be competitive and to come to this body where so many great people were before I. But there is a fine line between a responsible public financing program and pigs at a trough. That's what this bill is. It's pigs at a trough. It's, it's politicians eating up the tax dollars for a program that's not necessary. There is nobody who's going to say, 
I'm not going to run for public advocate because I can't get that extra $911,000. We have 25 candidates talking about running right now, just right now, at least, I think, maybe 26. The, there is nobody that I've heard say, well, if only the public financing was a little greater, I'd be able to participate in this democracy, this great New York City experiment. Nobody's saying that. The program that we have works. I know because I'm here. And I was outspent four, five, six to one, but I held down my spending to a cap. I participated in the program. And the covenant between the taxpayers and myself is that I was able to receive public financing, like so many of, the co of my colleagues here today and in this council. There is nobody that I've heard of, maybe we'll hear, that has said, I can't make this run because it's not eight to one, because $2.4 million is not enough. But if only I had 3.4, 3.5, that would be good. I haven't heard anybody say that. So I urge my colleagues to vote no. Obviously, as we know here, no bill comes to this point unless it's a yes vote. So I recognize that I stand lonely, but that's okay. I'm going to vote no. I think my community wants me to do that. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for your time. Well, I was thinking of running, but after you spoke, uh, I'm not going to run for public Mr. Advocate. Chairman, it would be 26 I, or 27 candidates. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was 22, but uh, well, uh, so with that, let's, uh, let's call for the vote. Roll call. Lee Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Governmental Operations, Introduction 748A and 1288A, Items are Coupled, Chair Cabrera. Aye. Kalos. I proudly vote aye. Mizell. Yes. Powers. Uh, can I just permission to explain my vote? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. I, I wanted to just um, first uh, just make a few points that I, I just in response to both of the uh, all the all the very very good points that just came up. The first one is I think that the uh, I think for certain that the existence of the public matching funds is the reason that we get so many candidates to run for office and that we have city council races, public advocate races, borough president races where you see new candidates who never held office running for the first time. You see people that are what we call unexpected candidates, but also just that people who want to want the opportunity take advantage of it because there is the public matching funds and you don't have to do it the way Albany does it which is to raise large amounts of money and do it very fast that the public uh, matching funds makes you eligible to run so I think that that logic applies here as well which is that expanding it certainly expands opportunities for people to be competitive and also I think does actually recruit more people to run because the ease of fundraising or the difficulty I should say of fundraising is removed from the equation here um, certainly there's still obstacles. You have to get a lot of, you still have to get a lot of contributions. You still have to um, uh, be efficient with the way you spend your money. But, um, but I think it does actually offer opportunities to people. And the other thing I'd say is I think that there are two intentions of this bill that are, are, are or, uh, that we should mention. One is I think it actually upholds the intention of the voters on, uh, uh, on the, the, uh, the charter question. I think it actually extends the, the, the thing that they voted for to elections that will happen before then. And I think, it, um, I think it makes it easier to run for office for those who are running as much as it uh, makes it easier to find new candidates. For those who maybe have never even held office, the difficulty of raising money is a real one, and I think it actually upholds that as well. With that being said, I don't, di I don't disagree with the questions that were the, or the comments that were raised about process and expediency. We are in a, a very weird moment right now, so the race that is coming up in seven weeks is an odd moment in time for this city. So even if we, so if we want to do it, we have to do it with expediency. Um, but certainly, the public's opportunity to comment on things, the opportunity to have a fiscal note when before you see a bill, all those things are valid questions. And I think there are things that we should be taking back uh, to to staff and to the speaker and things like that. So I do appreciate uh, the councilman for raising what are just procedural questions about how this body works. But with all that being said, I think I've given my answer anyway. I'm voting aye on the bill. And I want to thank you to Councilor Member Kalos because when I ran last year, I talked a lot about running for office and good government. He was already doing a lot of the work on it. He has been pushing a bill for a very long time to make it easier to run for office. I actually had a version that was just for special elections elections to give it an opportunity, but I think that what we're doing today it upholds the spirit of what he was trying to do and what I was as well. So I vote aye. Thank you. 
Jaeger. I vote aye on 748. I vote no on 1288. Uh, there's not a single member at this table that I'm not happy uh, was able to participate in the public financing program and to be here. And for it's an honor for me to serve with you all. Um, but for the reasons stated uh, prior here too, I respectfully vote no. Thank you. Perkins. Thank you, I on all. Introduction 748A is adopted by the committee by a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. And introduction 1288A is adopted by the committee, five in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you so much, and we'll leave it, uh, the vote open for another 20 minutes. <laughs>